exactly starting from. Put this guy away. Get his cap back on him. There, enamel spray. Just leave this in here. We're done with that. Close the gate. Dogs love to bark. And there's always another dog in the presence. It's very nice. Hopefully it stays that way. Set. Put a masking tape. A little hanger. Hang all my tapes like this, like a caterpillar. All right, let's see here. So the first broken part we have is like right up there, right? The little chip. So let's see what we tackle that guy. Put some of these guys away. Let's go see his, put this the electric tube. More than we really asked for. This probably lasts like almost like the molly grease pretty much forever. <laughs> Since it's grease, it really doesn't really wear out that. Uh -oh, so it's got a long shelf life, even for a chemical. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and try to get that tip replaced. You guys can see there. And I believe I put all the broken parts besides the little straps that we cut off ourselves, really. Um, I didn't bring those back because those are not going to be glued back for sure. Those probably have to be welded back, if anything. All these little pieces here. So let's get those guys out of the way. And look how many I took out. Two, four, six, eight. 10, including this thing here. That's how many I get. Now these are all the broken pieces I found here and there. This thing might just came from shrivel, but here it goes. This is the piece here that goes in there somehow. Yeah, that goes in there. I'm almost thinking it's gonna go straight, right? So it's gonna be, I need to have to get maybe a pair of something to hold it upright. Sorry, something to hold it upright while I put it in there somehow. And I, I can't get into it this much because this guy's in the way. So I'll have to get like a pair of tweezers or something to hold it. There's no point in putting super glue and you can't get, you know, a good reach for it. So let's work on the ones that we can. Like this guy right here, he's from pretty much this guy here. So he's could probably, and this guy here came from a plastic housing. This probably came on the bike frame. So I'll get started on that one. And again, it's very minimal. I'm not sure if I even want to care to tuck it all the way in there and put that little pot because you can see here on top of you you can't even tell it's literally hidden so let's go ahead and try to get this guy at least in there and he was glued once before so sometimes super glue won't actually bond on these oil plastic because they have mostly an oil base that's pretty why they don't actually stick on there it's just like you using the wd-40 on there so that's why it doesn't bond too well certain certain surface you have to get something out. close that close this guy All right, so here he is, and here we'll be gluing him. So, okay, all these little parts here are not really critical broken parts. I mean, this one, like you see here, there's a whole bunch of heat sink holes already right here, right? So it's really not going to matter if he gets on there or not get on there. One thing is maybe aesthetically, but other than that, not even aesthetically. I mean, there's all kinds of holes behind him, side of him, and everything else already. So it really, really, really doesn't matter. But I'll put it on there just to see if I can. It, he fell off because we were trying to mount the engine back. So that was the only time he broke off again. So it just might not be the right type of glue that actually helped him stay on there. But this one's actually set that's, what do you call that? I'll even bring a needle nose. Maybe I can get a little bit more finger leverage or something to uh, hold it on in place. Okay. 
here we go. So we're gonna open our Gorilla Super Glue here. Super Glue Extra Strength. Super Glue Gel. It's a gel, so it's not gonna drip, which is kind of nice. And I think we're gonna use the. I think also they put a little special thing where it doesn't dry up too easily. Let's see if it does. Usually these things dry hard, and you can't get any Super Glue out of them. But let's see if this thing is different. Okay, so we're gonna put it all around the crack area. Let's do the crack area first. Try zoom in this guy first. There we go. So we're gonna go get all the crack area. Careful not to glue your finger because that always happens. I've seen one video where the <laughs> kids were playing. I don't know, it's just regular glue, but I guess the dog was hairy. And they pretty much, it's a puppy too. It's like a little dachshund hound or something. Not a dachshund hound, it's like one of those hound dogs or something like that. Basset hound. But uh, yeah, uh, it was still hairy though for a basset hound, so it might have been a mixed breed. But uh, it was um, entirely glue. Uh, half his body, his eyes were shut. <laughs> Excuse me. With glue, and this is not what I want to do. So let me get this off before glue's literally just sticks to my acrylic. Okay. So yeah, they, they, I guess the rescuer, or maybe the vet, or something, someone helped him, gave him a, a good shave. I thought they were skinning him alive, but that was just his whole coat there, gunked up with glue. And a poor puppy, uh, he wouldn't stand a chance. There was no way in heck that he could just got that washed off somewhere. That thing, they they had to actually scalp them off almost some of the areas. I could saw some of the skin come off with it. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get a head cold or a full cold. Who knows? Okay, so I'm gonna try and apply enough here. I right know I got every bit here because I know it's gonna smash. It's gonna create a little more out. So that's fine. It actually says one drop per every inch ounce, but when you have a shape like this, you know it's kind of hard to go one ounce and. Because you have to actually get it to the area, you know, what I mean you can go one ounce and it'll never come to that area One I mean one drop for every square foot or something like that or square inch Is that's what it says on the package, but I don't buy it. You can't there's no way. Okay, so here we go I got about 10 seconds supposedly So as soon as it hits the bond area and I'm trying to stabilize this sucker here so you can capture it for you Okay, you're gonna have to see a little bit what I'm seeing Let's see if I can get it. There we go. This way has way more light. All right, let me just, let me get this guy fixed. The super glue is like really on here now, so I got to get going fast. There we go. He's fixed. Okay. Now I got to get in a position where I feel comfortable. All right. Should have did it with my bare hands. But I didn't want to touch most of the glue here. Come on. The glue is almost drying up, and here I am still figuring around how to get to that area. So here we go. I got some on my finger, unfortunately. Oh, man. I don't think I have leverage here. It's going to pop out, perhaps. Oh, damn. Yep. I knew it. I don't have leverage. I don't feel like I have enough wig room without blocking the camera, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to block the camera. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Come on. Once I get that all back up, you guys can see it. It's not like you guys never super glue anything before, right? But I figure I share every detail. Oh man, this is just a messy situation. There we go, look. Look like you never seen it. Give it some pressure. It's about 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hopefully your finger doesn't stick with it. I'll hold it for 20, just double up on it. Ooh, nice. There you go. That's done. <laughs> that was one missing part there. Looked like it just bonded it. Alright. Yeah, it's bonded it alright. Think about these things, they work pretty damn quick. They'll stay on for you know, until you put a lot more pressure on it again. But yeah, at least we got that little cover there. Again, it makes no difference to us if it was on there or not, but we just want to see if it actually worked on there. So it did. So that one's done. You can see from all angles. Just like it never chipped off, huh? It's black on black, so it's hard to tell where the lines are, but you can see the lines there. 
there we go. See that? The super glue just. Now you don't want to overdo super glue because the more you put on there, it doesn't mean it's going to be stronger. It actually makes it weaker because it weighs it down the areas that shouldn't have super glue. So if you think you got a good enough bond there, leave it alone. It's 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 good. You're good. We got all the corners that we plan to make sure it stays. So one one down. How many more little pieces to go? Oh, the other one's plastic one. The other one's up top here, which I'm still debating on really trying it out. Um, I'm gonna have to probably bleed again my thing one because I feel like see here it's it's it will break but i feel like i can get more tighter because if you look at my right one my front wheel when i squeeze it it's way more better grip well actually you're right it's probably the same loose what am i talking about michael so i guess that's how it goes well now that i go from the top here i feel it now different yeah it's uh no this one's a little bit more looser still see let's see if i can come from an angle here you can see so this one's here i mean yeah, I mean, it's fine. I can, when I'm hitting the brakes, I wanted to really, you know, brake within a little tip. Now, sometimes you hold a brake to turn, right? You're holding this, just prepare to brake a turn. You don't want all of a sudden just brake on you. So you do want a little bit of free play before it actually grips the brake. Break. So this might be, I mean, it's doable, but it's not perfect. This one's, yeah, it's about the same. What am I talking about? We'll leave it alone. One less thing to work on. All right, so this is it. Uh, Mike from NCY Store. I'm just going to wrap it up for today. And in fact, you know what? Why won't we wrap it up and actually mount this guy on there and really see the lights and everything come by? So let's do this. Let me go ahead and do this. Maybe I can get this done before lunchtime. Because I am a bit of hungry. I think of going Jack in the Box and getting that big chicken sandwich. My dream was to actually drive this guy here. Beautiful CBT cover, ankle biter. Uh, jack in the box drive through or not even well yeah drive through because I don't want to leave the site of the scooter in the parking lot but yeah let's go and put this guy on here because again the adhesive is already done super glue is already done there's no more need for him to hang out here any, anymore with us so I just gotta make sure I find the right tip for him so when you guys come back I'll probably do this I am kind of hungry so I better stop while I'm ahead so let me go ahead and First of all, get the keys out. Key's not gonna go through that little ignition. Uh, how I did this, by the way, is I use this tool here to drill this one. If you guys wanna know, it's very simple. You can, you can buy them, they have a little plastic nut here. Simp simple, you just gotta make sure you drill a little hole like this size. This is when I first started learning how to, you know, apply a certain chemical here. Look at, I didn't do a good job. I applied super glue just to mount this cover on here. I kept them rubbing it so much, I lost where it says ignition on and stuff down your keyhole. So that was, a, that was a learning curve there. But yeah, so what I was doing is tapping into my cigarette lighter here, which I take this out and I use it for my anchor um, car charger, which works super well. I mean, I take it for a drive on the zero battery level, let's say like one or two. I put it in here, drive for 10 minutes, I'm at like 25% charge already. And that's a blessing because when your phone dies, you know, everything else is, everything dies. So yeah, so here you look at it. This is our my voltmeter here. It's ready to be input in the connector. Like right there. Again, we just gotta make sure we put our positive or our positive and our negative and our negative. And there's the charger here. These guys have two, these guys have two. So we tapped it to each other. The reason why is I don't want my, my meter here to monitor my battery even when my scooter's off because you don't want to keep on drawing LED lights because there's it, it an LED that's powering this thing. And so when the scooter's on, your lighter shouldn't come on either. You don't want your phone to charge while your scooter's not running and nothing's charging the battery, right? Your stator. So that's why you want to be really cautious. Let's check out our battery meter level, by the way. Let's see where our battery's at. It's been out of commission for, what, a week now? We had the scooter out since we've been working on all the other stuff. Okay, so there it goes. Set to voltage. All right. Negative, positive and negative. We're just testing out. Oh, look at that. Still a pretty good 13.30 charge. So once you actually see it on the scooter, it's gonna read the same exactly what's on the battery uh, with the connection hooked onto it. So what I'm gonna do is just press everything on and then probably after lunch or maybe sometime today or tomorrow, I'll work on putting it both because I am tired a little bit. Uh, my back is not hurting too bad. And my feet are still tingling, but uh, 
I don't want to push my luck. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get this mounted on here. I'm going to go ahead and put the wires back here. Oh yeah, I was going to show you the tool I used to drill this. Um, if you ever need to make a hole for these little gauges here, Harbor Freight, simple tool. Probably going to use it only once really, unless you have multiple projects. But um, this is it right here. This is the socket. I'm not sure if I showed you in the last video. But I'll show you. It's the carbon steel hole saw set. And what that does is it perfectly aligns it, or you align it yourself, but it perfectly centers where you're going to cut that big hole. I'm probably going to use this to make sure I get the right hole drilled out of the plastic to get these guys, these studs, to actually penetrate through. So I'll probably use this one more time to, to draw exactly where the hole is. But let me show you what comes with it. This one's already comes with a nice case. Comes with a drill bit. You can just attach it to your power drill. You know, not your impact, just a regular power drill. And at first when I thought about it, I looked at it, I'm like, isn't it missing a little another pieces here? Like it's missing this whatever. But it's actually all in here. So this is a, a drill bit that centers it. It is two pieces, because when you actually back this out, you'll see right now. When you actually back this out, put it right here. Okay, so when you actually back this out, see here it comes off like this. See that? There is a there is two pieces. I thought this was one whole piece. I said, isn't there a, a missing washer or something? But that's it right there. And what that does is since it's backed out like this and you have your nut, I think this is a 17 millimeter nut too, by the way. It's the same as the nut on here, I believe. Six to 17 millimeter socket, so that's very convenient. Say, so, here we go. So what you would do, if you find your right ones, you got a whole mess of them. They come like this. I think you even got the, the piece of plastic still on there so you guys can see what I cut. There it is, that's my piece of plastic I cut, so I can use this guy right here. So what you do is you place this inside like this, right? It comes out this way, it fits on like a square way, just like your clutch. Just like your clutch, see that? Comes out protruding out like this, so it creates a lock so it doesn't move around on you. It doesn't spin in circles, let's say, or strip. And then you put this to bolt it down on it. Let's see if I can get this bolted down. So this right here becomes your center point. So if you can get a view eye view of it, so when you're about to drill it, see. And they have smaller ones too, by the way. I did uh, kind of, not really bad at all, but yeah, I could have done with a little bit smaller on there, get a little bit more tighter fit. But I don't think there is a smaller one, or maybe there is. Let's check this one out. No, actually there is, see? It comes in certain sizes, you can see. This is for a little smaller than this one right here. I could have got away with this guy right here. And this will probably be enough to actually feed the whole... Um, you know, that gauge, the multimeter gauge thread, not multimeter, that voltmeter only. It only ch checks your volt. It doesn't give you any kind of temperature or outside or nothing like that or oxygen sensor. But yeah, this would be right there. You would put that in there in space. And so you want smaller or bigger, depending on the diameter. You could have got that in there. So I can use just this one here. This is the one I use. And it cuts, I wish it says, some, oh, there it does say something on the size. I can use a one and one fourth, 32 millimeter. Where it says that 32 millimeter one and one fourth that's the one I use and again I placed it I centered this the way I wanted to like for instance so here is just a clean side right here it would look like that actually when I, before I installed it before it was like this I, I didn't have now this was already in there don't get me wrong but this one didn't have it so what I did was I used this thing and I went ahead and you know I don't want to put any little marks on here but yeah you mark it where you want it to like on the top and you kind of get an idea which uh, the circular area you want it on and then you just attach your well you attach a drill ahead of time you know press pressure drill on there you don't have to if it's plastic soft like this you don't have to pre-drill or anything like that this thing will actually drill in first get the lock in position like hold the stud and then then if you push further down the teeth starts eating into the plastic around it so what you get is your end result Will be just that little piece of plastic that I just thought I had in my hand to show you. They're black, so it's hard for me to see where it rolled out to. God, I'm, a, I'm like a magician. I can actually hide my own product without even me knowing it. So yeah, let's see. 
Did I have some over here? Oh, well, it's gone. Oh, there it goes. I think it's about rolling things. See, there it goes. It chews it up. But you get a clean, clean install out of the way. Let's see if I can take this one part and you can see it. You can use it for, I guess, any kind of surface. Probably not much stainless steel or, I mean, like solid metal or anything. You can't just cut a hole with freely in the metal. You might need a little bit more than that. Maybe you need a machine press. But yeah, it's, it's, and then you just, it comes with a little plastic nut backing. You just back it up. I'll try to take it off for you, but if I can't, then I can't. And then you just align this, the face the way you want it to, front, and then. You put this through and then you put that little plastic back and once you make a nice hole there. I was going to show you the hole is pretty clean cut. So and that's it right there. So that's how I actually was able to mount it on there. And look at that. Look at these little guys. Are these even necessary? I'll be honest with you. What are these for back here? They're rusted. Do they clamp on anything? I don't think they are clamped on anything. So they're not really in use for, for anything. Let's see. I, I know they're, they're here to hold these guys here in place, right? And look, there's even a, a place where you can probably pop something out of here. And maybe they're supposed to hold some wires. But let's take them off. They just, they look rusty. They, I mean, I just don't see a need for those guys back there. Not holding any wires for us. So let me go get Phillips here. Remove those guys out. Let's put this thing away. Done show and tell on this guy here. Uh, so let's get him back this guy out first. So again, just backs out a very useful tool. I guess they call it carbon steel. Meaning if it's not stainless steel, it probably will rust on you if you leave it out in the rain or something. So there we go. That there. The dirt is from the paint, not from that. The, what we paint earlier. Put that in a little bit, little saran wrap or something. Just keep the moisture from it. Okay, I can put the sharp edge in front or you can put it in the back like this. It doesn't really matter, I'll put the sharp edge in the front. You just gotta be careful, you don't want to just also slam your hand on there. It doesn't hurt too bad. No, it's not like really like sharp, sharp. Okay, it comes with an Allen too. This Allen is supposed to drive in this, you know, to make sure if you need to take this off for any reason, I guess. You can put the Allen in there and Retighten it or something like that. You can see there it goes in. It's supposed to go in. This Allen doesn't even go in. There's an Allen bolt. They gave you like the wrong Allen for the rock. <laughs> Maybe. No, it's not going in. <laughs> they even give you the right Allen socket for it. Oh, there's a smaller one. I apologize. There's another one there here hanging out. So this must be for the Allen to maybe twist the first one in there. So this small one here probably would go into this one now. Yep, this one will turn in and back this out, I guess. Oh yeah, this pump comes loose now. Okay, I think it's, let's back it on and see what happens. There you go, see it comes out. So it's like a drill bit, sort of, if you tighten your drill bit. You want longer, shorter, or if you want to put a different attachment bit in there, I guess. I'm not sure. Maybe something even smaller than this one. But yeah, you can just use it right out of the box to make your hole there. I recommend using this one instead. Or you can try to cut it yourself, but it probably won't be a nice round. So yeah, that's right there. In Harbor Freight, probably have it for 10 bucks or something. Maybe they'll sell. You might even get it free. Who knows what they run. And then they run crazy giveaways. The only thing I got that was really useful for me was a little bug electrocuting fly swat. That was given for free. Alright, so I don't know. Maybe this actually didn't come from this. I probably brought it from some other setup so let me take that one back then because I don't see any other allen bolts that's different so let me put this back in my toolbox for some other use so I won't get confused <laughs> plastic shaving I'll put this as a reminder I'll put it right here so I know which one I can use to actually cut my other one so we'll leave this in here as a reminder So that's it. That's the tools that you need to drive that in there. Now let's go and take this guy off. 
adding some more rust to our collection we don't need. And let's go and put the super glue away. Oh, these were the instructions for it, which I never look at, but you figure out the mechanics of it. It doesn't seem, but I did <laughs> wonder why they didn't give me the extra one. I was like, how am I going to hold this guy together? Because I didn't realize this actually came apart. <laughs> so yeah, I might want to look at instructions before you uh, assume the worst. All right, so let's go and get Phillips real quick. Put this guy back into town. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to take them off like we took off all the rest of these ones. Alright, so... I just don't see a need for this guy in here. I know he's supposed to... Maybe he's a backing or something? To hold in case it gets too loose, but that's a weird way to put a washer, you know? A little hook, hook washer. So let's... I'm careful of driving him out. He might, something else might fall below. It might be hard to get in. Yeah, I just don't see a need for this little strap. I think it was supposed to hold some, some wires for you behind the scenes, but let's see if he even needs a period to see this guy hit. See, this guy gets hold independently, so he doesn't even need a bolt there. So it's fine. We'll leave the bolts out. One less screw to fall loose for no reason. Unless it's covering something else. Is there, No, there's no straight hole in there. It's just a solid uh, mess, so we don't even need to use a... We won't even need to keep the, the bolts in there, or the screw. So let's take this one guy out too. God, this thing's rusty. All right, so that adds to our collection of rust parts that we don't need from our Chinese scooter. Non-useful parts, really. Oh. There we go. So both of these little bits is out, and with their two screws so <sighs> all right so there we go let's kind of give it a good wipe down before we try to level it in place i think we might need to put the plastic holder in it now i believe this has it or no it might be coming from this end actually we might need to put those little plastic clips so we'll do that prep it up a little plastic clip and might be a good time to actually put even the uh what you call that your your silicone to help stabilize. So this will get a plastic clip. This will get, well, no, this won't get plastic. This thing is huge. But yeah, for the most part, I think we're gonna have to wait for one more frame to really seal the deal. Unless these guys here, looks like when they're facing, it's gonna be facing like this, by the way. So when these guys are being faced down like this, they'll be driven into these little holes right there on the sides right there, you see? So those are fine there. So that yeah, let's give it a wipe down and kind of give it a good placement. So here we go. Finally got one cover attempted, you know, other than just that. And then this guy's being worked on in the back. All right, so let's go ahead and hope that has paint. Even though it's black, we just don't want any more extra debris. Okay, so we're probably going to have to start putting the, the little metal clamps in these guys quickly. Maybe it does take it. I think it does. You'll have to because plastic on plastic will not screw unless it has a little metal plate. Look at that little rubber boot. Okay, let me go and get that little plastic plate there. Okay, guy, get the little plastic. These are a little plastic right there. I popped some silicone just in case anyway we need to help reinforce it, so I'll move it over there to the center. That way I can come back here and share it. Silicone's probably pretty dry already. It's kind of wasteful because it actually fills up this whole cap, right? And then you can't use this little, you know, extra silicone that it can create the cone fun. It just uses it to make a seal. And then if you take it off, you still have leftover silicone residue here, which... You know, unless you have a really flat surface to spray it on, it's kind of wasteful. So I have to probe it out and it's a mess. Okay, and we're going to make sure we get the right screws for it. And we're going to attach our wires. I don't want to do this in haste because I'm excited to go for lunch either, but I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, so 
So what we're gonna do is let's go and get the little, we're gonna need our little, these guys are here because again, plastic will not screw unless it had this in the backing of it. So you wanna put the big hole facing and then the small hole where the end of the screw is gonna go. So it's gonna be driving in forward. Like for instance, this example, you can see here, you don't wanna put the small screws in front of you. You wanna put them back of you because the screw tip is gonna be the smallest tip and that needs to drive all the way to the end of the smaller hole. Oh, careful when you're doing this, you might wanna really focus and, oh, sorry. Like I said, focus or else you're gonna be putting the big screw. Yeah, all I'm thinking about right now is that double chicken patty with Swiss cheese and bacon. <laughs> Check the box. <laughs> Get some buttermilk sauce and some fries and a nice Dr. Pepper to wash it down. You're delicious. <sighs> That's so good. Okay. I mean, not the not this part right here, but <laughs> the food. All right. So I'm probably going to need two hands. I really don't want to damage the plastic. They're fragile. So let me go ahead and try to lay this low here like this. That way, hopefully you guys can see most of what I'm doing. Not all of it. Pretty good resolution there. All right. Come around. Okay. Focusing on getting this guy here in. So if you need to gap it or more or whatever, be careful because you're smacking it. And these are still fragile little, you know, plastic. So if you need to gap it a little bit bigger, you can gap a little bit bigger. Just go and open it up. Feed it in there. I know you probably want to put pressure on it, get some more. Oh, there you go. There you go. See? Now, you, since you gapped it from the top, you got to push it back down. <laughs> it's a never-ending game of tug and more. All right. So there you go. That's in there now. And you got to get the rest of it. We got one, two, and the other side has the same set of three. So let's go and get these guys all in there. And they come loose on you. you feel free to put some silicone on there and help you stabilize it. See that one? I think they're all being pressed, so I gotta actually repress them out. So, probably the best way to actually use something like, you know, I'm thinking my, this is my Kickstarter or something. Yeah, just gonna use that to open up the clam a little bit. Once you got open, yeah, keep in mind again, wherever you're facing, wherever you're driving, the small one needs to be behind. There we go. Because without these ones, the plastic would not stay on there from plastic to plastic. So these little metal fixture acts like a washer. Washer and a, a reinforcement screw behind. So this guy's not going to stick unless I give him a little bit more closure. So you can squeeze it to get more closure and then try to force it back in there. See, now you can't get the other end in. There we go. Snap in there. All right, so let's go keep going. I believe this is also gonna take some too. If I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken, that might not take it. It might just slip in. Let's see. Um, if it's plastic, it should take it. So let me go and grab that from the top. Again, you want to hold your hold the ground here. If I'm wrong, I will have to pull it out. I can't remember because I have not put this shell back in almost a year now since I took it off a year ago. And it might actually not take it. I think it's just straight plastic on plastic. But I feel like there is no thread here so it has to take it. So yeah, we'll leave it on there. Okay, let's go and get on the other side, do the same thing. I'll just swing over. Then we gotta find the right screws for it. This one 
didn't have one either. Okay, so I guess there's another collar one here that we need to put. So all should have it. Collar one, you can come from front ways or you can come from sideways. Let's see which way will be best. Oh, this one's probably the front way. Then squeeze. Kind of get into that position where it's squeeze. So it's all getting its little threads here. It's a little dressing thread. I don't know what you call them, but I guess they're plastic clips, maybe. That's quite a bit of them. So once we seal this, there's no going back and messing around with inside this. So we want to make sure everything's working in order. I believe they are. If we get electricity to our uh, voltmeter reading there uh, from our LED, I think our, we can assume that our you know cigarette lighter is working also because it's tapping from the same wire harness there. Okay, so I'm getting these guys too now. Oh, look at that. See, it's kind of loose still, but okay, we'll get that one back. We'll get back at them. A little fragile. Uh, oh, more falling off. And these are so freaking fragile. <laughs> Almost gotta do it this way, but I don't want to do it this way. I want it to come from straight. I believe that's the way it does. Oh, but it keeps on wanting to go this way. Why? I don't see there's a there's a need for it to there we go. Gotta get into that. I want to cover most of the protection. So I'm coming from this back side. How many drop? One? One drop? That's not bad. Or one, yeah, one drop. This guy came in pretty damn easy. Okay, let's get the next one. And then we got four more to replace. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. We're going from the top, so we're screwing from the top. We have to make sure that the small hole is always facing the opposite side. I wasn't sure of myself for a second there. There we go. See, these guys actually go in, in, so I guess I have to really get these guys in too. I have to take a flathead to help me drive them in. Let's get this one last in, and we'll make it back to the other one. We'll just we'll figure out which, I believe this might take the bigger one or smaller one. We'll find out. Just one that drop. You can push them in some more. If they, they don't feel like they're, they're too loose, you can squeeze them more and then put it in. This one's still kind of loose, so I'll, I'll take them back off. I'll squeeze it. That way it doesn't fall loose too easily. No, it's too tight, but that's okay. We needed that. Then we'll get, push them in. There we go. Now he's not going to fall out that easily. Alright, so we got all our little socket that these won't need it. I guess these are going to straight dry through. And then let's see what else we get. I think that's about it. I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Almost a dozen little, um, you know, plastic um, holder there. And then we got to find also the right screw that's going to pretty much do the job of putting it in there. I mean, I bought these things, you know, you lose them a lot, so I bought a whole bunch of extras here. So we could probably rob the, we can probably take it from the new bolts, unless we want to use the shiny ones. I mean, we have the shiny silver ones, but I figured the green one might blend in a little bit better than the shiny silver ones. So we might even rob it from these silver ones. I think they're about the same. So let, let's check it out. We're going to start 
We're going to attach the wires and we're going to bring our Phillips. We need a Phillips, I guess, for these guys and perhaps we got the flathead over there, right? No? I'll take a flathead too. I'll take a smaller, smaller one here. Probably want to use the longer one. Oh yeah, we do have the, we do have the Phillips here. Okay, so let's say we got these screw packs here. And then you look at, I believe these might have been the screw for it. I'm not too exact yet. You can see here. From my screw chest here. These might be the plastic screws for it. And the only way you can tell is if you feed them in there and see if they're actually too big. Because again, it's been a year, I don't remember it. So I'm going to figure out right now. You want the best out of the washer here because again, you don't want these things, you know, you want to cover most of it. So you can see here, this won't push in. I mean, it'll push, it'll force leak in there, but it's kind of inclined. So that means that head is too big for it. It's not really taking this guy's head. So we'll leave this guy out of the picture, put him back in there. Now these guys look a little bit smaller, but they're probably not, well, I don't think we need that much length. I mean, just to cover, you can see here, it doesn't really take that much thread for it. So let's see. See, these guys will go in there and these guys will go in there and they have a little bit of flat head here to wash it with again i can't use allen bolts unfortunately because allen bolts don't make well i'm not sure the ones i know of they don't make plastic screws they're sharpened in they mostly make machine screws for aluminum and metal or stainless steel okay so yeah these probably won't oh look there's an example of one right here why why is even this one here like, you think, why would they put a screw here? What's the screw for? This goes to nowhere. Or does it? Yeah, it goes to nowhere, really. It's like a it's like a screw just to have a screw on there. <laughs> it's like if you lose a screw or something, you know, like if you lose a button on your shirt, there are a little couple extra buttons. Oh, they got one another in, too. I mean, is it supposed to touch ground or something? I mean, it's plastic. It's not supposed to have ground. It's weird. Huh. Interesting, interesting. All right, so anyway, um, and I don't think these washers are supposed to go in there because these washers are, are made, I think remember these washers, they're mainly for the foot pegs. I mean, for the floor or the floor. So these guys will not go in there anyway if I wanted to put them in there, see? They won't, they won't go in there. So I'm just trying to make sure. Okay, so we can get these guys in there. Do we want to use a silver one or go with a new pack here? Is there more screw packs somewhere around? Yeah, we can go ahead and open this guy up here. And let's see if this guy will do better here. So this screw packs here. Oh, let me go ahead and put this back here so I can get started playing screw. Okay. Let's snap there. Get a clear shot. Okay, so we're going to open these guys up and I'm going to compare the length of it. Just to double check to make sure it's going to be a good substitute. Because these guys didn't come with the, originally with the scooter, but I bought them as an extra screw pack. Because these things are like a dime a dozen, you'll lose them. But let's see if their thickness and everything is going to be the same. Because you want to be able to actually drive them in here. So they feel like they'll drive in. Yeah, they will drive in. So they will drive in and they'll lock in. Uh, but you also want to make sure they.